Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make Your Loco channel. Today we're going to show you how to change your fuel pump driver module on your 2004-2008 F-150. Now what this module does is it interfaces between the PCM and your fuel pump. So basically it, it's a switch for the high current that the fuel pump takes. So it's low current going to here to control it from the PCM. Meanwhile, it's a solid state switch to turn on and modulate the power going to the fuel pump so we can get that desired fuel pressure. These are used on electronic returnless fuel systems found in the Ford F-150 starting in 2004. Now the problem with these is that the internals are okay, the connector's fine, everything's built well with it. It's corrosion, corrosion gets to these things after a while. So on the back side here, it mounts right against the steel frame. Steel and aluminum, galvanic corrosion. You add salt, water, muck, it just packs behind there. And after a while, the thing will get so bad, it will actually corrode, break through, and all those metal particles will short out the circuit board inside of here. Blows a fuse, your vehicle either dies going down the road, or more commonly, you get to a store, you get home, whatever, you come out later, you go to start it, and the thing won't start because the fuel pump driver module is dead. Now, the most common code associated with this is a P1233. That means the fuel pump driver module is offline. It's offline because the fuse blew, okay? It can't talk to anymore, or the circuit board inside are just corroded so much, there's a break in the circuitry inside of it. Either way, the fix is the same. We're gonna put a new one in from Ford, and you wanna use the Ford ones. Trust me, the dormant ones, the other ones out there cause a lot, a lot of issues, okay? Now, the Ford one is improved in the way of the mounting of it. So, they include these studs and these standoff studs, so you, it keeps it about a quarter, an uh, eighth to a quarter inch away from the frame. So, we don't have that galvanic corrosion reaction. So, this new one, once you change it, should be good for the life of the vehicle. Let's get to it. All right, so we're not going to get into diagnostics in this video. It's simply a replacement video. Uh, but I do have two other videos on how to diagnose this module depending on how it failed, okay? And I'll link to those videos down below. I go in great detail on how to diagnose those and what it looks like and even sounds like depending on the failure, okay? It can be tricky to diagnose sometimes. Real quick, though, I want to go over the wiring diagram and the pins on the connector for this so you can do some quick checks while you're underneath there, okay? So this, this fuse 920 amps, that's on the in, uh, cabin fuse box, passenger footwell area. That's the fuse you want to look to see if it's blown or not. Fuse 920 amps, okay? So that's the one, it's going to be a yellow fuse. That powers uh, power down through the fuel pump relay here, down through the inertia fuel cutoff switch. That's also right next to the fuse box. A little red button on there, push down on it and make sure that's not popped. Then the power continues down and it feeds power to the fuel pump driver module, this little sucker right here. Not only is that power up so it can talk to the PCM, uh, but it also is power to go out to the fuel pump itself and power that and modulate power to that. So at the very least, you wanna make sure you're getting power at pin five and a ground at pin three on here. So that's, if the connector, you pull the connector down and you're looking at it, Here's the locking tab. Pin three is your constant ground, uh, whereas pin five, you should get 12 volts or more. Whenever the key is turned on for two seconds, you should get 12 volts. If not, you need to backtrack over to this fuse and really make sure that it's not blown, okay? Swap it off if you have to, uh, just to make sure. All right, so let's go down below and change this sucker out. Replacing the module is pretty straightforward. You wanna come under the truck here in the rear you're gonna look above your rear axle at the last cross member. You see it right there. Now your spare tire is gonna be in the way, so you wanna use your roadside tools and lower it down enough out of the way uh, so we can gain access to it. Now once you're underneath here, you can look at it and you can see the problem already. Now this one corroded so bad that it rush jacked underneath here and it pushed up in the center and cracked it in half. Look at that. Yeah, luckily this one did not leave me stranded, um, but this is how you're gonna use, this is what you're usually gonna see. You know, it's cracked in half, heavily corroded, uh, maybe a burning smell from the electronics inside of here, the circuit board. You can also get a burning smell from the connector itself in rare occasions. Uh, so once you're underneath here, if you do smell like an electrical burning smell, the very first thing you wanna check is to see if this connector is melted. So 
Just go ahead and squeeze the tab on here, pull it off, tap it off of there, and take a look. This one is just fine. No melted uh, connectors or terminals on there. So the connector is good on this one. We simply need the module. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unbolt it, then we're gonna clean up the surface, and then we're gonna proceed to install a new hardware and a new module. It's a very quick procedure. All right, first thing you're gonna do is disconnect the connector. So you're gonna squeeze in the tab on this side, squeeze, and then pull, okay? And then we're gonna get that connector out of our way, something like that, okay? Then there's two eight millimeter bolts. These generally come out no problem. These are throwaways. Yeah. And there it is in the back side there. Let me get you, uh, yeah, there we go. That's how it looks in the back side. It gets so severely corroded uh, that can either rush jack like this one did and crack, or right here, you put a little bit of uh, like a, a pick or a, a screwdriver into it, it'll pop right through like it's doing right here. You see how it's getting a hole right through there? And that's where it shorts out internally and blows that fuse. This one you can see is just starting that. Uh, but definitely rush jacked and cracked. Look at that. Right in half. Now this next step is optional. Ford wants us to actually, once the module's off, come in here and clean this up and then paint it, which is always a good idea, but if your truck's so far gone already and you just wanna change it out, you can just skip ahead. Now what I do is I will use like a scotch Bright pad and just kinda of clean this area up, get all these chunks of uh, the aluminum off of here that are just corroded and stuck to it, you know? I'll get them off of here as best I can with a scotch Bright. kinda of scuff the area up right here without taking off the paint that's still kinda of there, okay? So we'll just scotch bright it up a little bit, get it roughed up, the area behind it. I'm gonna take some air. So we'll just kind of prep it with some brake clean. Okay, just like that. And then Ford has us putting this stuff on right here, this high temperature anti-corrosive coating. Uh, they use this on the oil pans and the 7.3 diesels and all that stuff, frame fixes, all that stuff. It's pretty good stuff, it's strong stuff. Um, just wants to slather it on here. Kind of stop any kind of corrosion from getting worse. Makes it look nice anyways. And this will just kind of seal up behind the fuel pump driver module. Nice and pretty. And this stuff's kind of nice, it, it uh, dries mate. Uh, it's like a mate black. So it'll blend right in with the frame. Parts of the frame there are still painted anyways. There we go, just enough like that. Now once this area is all cleaned up and ready to go, you can take the new hardware that comes in the kit and start threading it into the existing holes in the cross member here. Get them threaded in a couple of threads so we don't cross thread, and then you can just go ahead and finish tightening them down all the way. Now these studs right here, these standoffs, are what actually fixes the root cause of the problem, the corrosion issue. So this will space it away from the frame here. Next, we can go ahead and get our module. There's a locating uh, nub right here. Kind of still lines up with it. You'll see it right there. Put it on there, hold it, 
And then there's two nuts that are provided with the module. Go ahead and thread those on. And the same thing, just tighten them up by hand. Okay, so now it's secure. It has the gap. We're good to go. The one last thing I like to do back here, since um, it is all exposed back here, the elements and everything, is I will put a little bit of the XG12, woo, the XG12 electrical grease from Motorcraft on there, and that'll uh, keep the connector nice and protected. All the terminals in here. Put that on there and then connect it until it clicks. Make sure you hear that click. There it is. Then give it a little tug, make sure it doesn't come off. And that's it. It's good to go now. It's not gonna fail again with this system. And we can go ahead and install the spare tire back up. Go into the cabin, make sure the fuse is okay. And then go ahead and start it up.